Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jermaine V. Beltran, and I'm a student of the Master of Development Communication Program here in the University of the Philippines Open University, or UPOU. So today, I will be tackling and discussing with you my thesis proposal entitled, Podcasting as ICT 4D, or Information Communication Technology for Development. The use of podcasting on the development of language and culture of Baguio's Ibaloy community. So in my presentation, I will be talking about the introduction of my study, specifically a brief background of my research, the research problems and gaps, my objectives for this study, the limitations of my research, the conceptual and theoretical frameworks of my study, and the strategy or methodology of my research. So let's start. In the Philippines, we have a very diverse culture. Just look at this map. Each color represents a different culture or uh, members of the society or groups in the society. We have more than 100 million population in the Philippines, of which there are 14 to 17 million indigenous peoples, or in this study, we'll be calling them IPs. And they are categorized or grouped in 110 ethno-linguistic groups. However, despite the diverse culture for generations, IPs have been discriminated and marginalized. Their lands have been taken from them. They experience unequal treatment in government and society in general. And worse, their traditional way of life and culture is on the way of being overcome by trends in the majority of the society. Thus, their language and culture is undermined. This is much very evident in the mainstream media, especially in the broadcast industry. Content produced and language used in programs are catered to the general Filipino and English-speaking population of the country. Just take a look at this. The Philippine media, wherein the IPs are being neglected, they have been misrepresented in, in a, a lot of shows, especially soap operas and dramas. They have been also objects in the news items or news uh, programs, including drama, they have been exoticized and they have a lot of problems with the Philippine media. So as a result, there are no true programs or shows about the IPs and their culture and traditions, and there is also no media platform that caters for them. Just in fact, in broadcast media in particular, they're always battling for ratings. Ratings in which the audience are for the general public and mostly in urban centers. How about our IPs who are based outside of these urban centers or in rural, area, or rural areas in our country? There is also a fast turnaround of shows. There are too many shows that they run for how many weeks only or even months. And because of that fast turnaround of shows, Year on year, based on my observation, their forms or their, uh, their plots are too repetitive or even formulaic. Or just in my observation, parang nauubusan na sila ng mga ideya sa kanilang mga programa. Thus, IP language and culture in the national scene is practically absent. Although Filipino is the declared national language in our constitution and English as the lingua franca in our population, the mere fact that there are 183 living languages in the country says a lot on how the country sees indigeneity. Ang dami, pero hindi na papakita o hindi nagagamit naman ito sa national media or in broadcast media in general. In fact, out of 175 indigenous languages in the country, 28 of them are already in trouble, and 11 are already dying. Some have become extinct. One of the living languages is here in the Cordilleras, called the Ibadoy or Ibaloy. 
but there is still the imminent danger of being in trouble or even dying if it is not nurtured or even practiced. This also speaks to the Ibaloy culture. So the Ibaloy people occupied the southeastern two-thirds of Benguet, specifically in the locality where Baguio City now stands. The Cordillera Studies Center of UP Baguio noted that there were 27 families who considered the locality as their homes. This dramatically changed when the Americans came and conquered the land in the early 1900s. Add to that the inevitable development of the soon-to-be city and increased economic activity throughout the 20th century. However, ironically in the Baguio and Benguet media, languages used, look at this, Filipino, English, and Ilocano. However, there are no Ibaloy or even the other local languages of our ethnolinguistic groups here in Baguio and Benguet or even in the Cordillera region in general. Although there are stations with programs for IPs, there's the DZWT and DZBS. However, there are no dedicated programs or stations for our indigenous peoples or run by indigenous peoples. Thus, IP, language, culture, and even news are just items rather than important segments of their programming or inside their programs. So technically, they are off the air. The largest of the minority groups, which is uh, Ibaloy in Baguio City, could only be heard through or during festivals or when they gather in groups or just in their communities. But how about their right to be heard or how about their voice? Well, radio is there. Just like what I said a while ago, DZWT and DZBS have programs or even segments in their programs which cater for the IPs, especially for the Ibolo and Kankanai communities here in Baguio and Benguet. However, the problem with radio is its limited reach. The reach of a radio station can only be based on how strong its radio signal can actually broadcast the messages. And those messages are even transient in nature wherein once the program or the message has been already broadcasted, there is no longer a way for it to be rewind or be reviewed in the future. And there's just so much technical complexity in opening up a radio station or even making a program for IPs. Although there are radio stations in the country being run by IPs and talking about IP culture and issues such as Radio Sagada in Sagada, Mountain Province, and Radio Lumad, based in uh, Mindanao, it can only reach far and meant for the general audience. And it is also limited by the lack of reach, by the technology, the transient nature of radio, and its influence. So the internet offers a solution to these problems with a special platform or tool that has been available since the popularity of the iPod. This is podcasting. So podcasting is the way of digitally broadcasting or distributing audio files via the internet much like radio but has more in store than traditional broadcasting. Think of podcasting like radio on demand so long as the audience have access to the internet and a smartphone or any gadget to listen to the podcasts. Podcasts are also or are also podcasts also address the issue of time. The length of a podcast may vary depending on the topic and is not bound on the programming, unlike radio. Thus, a podcast may last for as little as 15 minutes to more than 2 hours, which gives more than enough leeway for the content producer. So, it's very basic to create a podcast. You just need a computer, a microphone, an internet connection, and a host or people who will man the podcast station. Ironically, despite this easiness or convenient way of broadcasting messages and to propagate IP culture, tradition, and even their languages, 
in the Philippines, podcasting is technically absent, especially uh, when issues of the indigenous peoples are being talked about, or there are no. But ironically, in the Philippines, despite the convenience of using podcasting, there are no podcasts in the Philippines. And if you would see, podcasting could be a way of preventing the endangerment of Ibole language and culture. So because of that uh, problem with podcasting and so because of the problem of uh, the Ebola culture and language, in this research, I'd want to, uh, to fill in the gap, especially in the use of media and technology by the IPs. Second is, I want to know IP language and culture development through the media and their perception and effect of technology on their language and culture. So I want to answer this research problem. How do the affordances of podcasting affect the development of language and culture of Baguio's Iboloy community? With specific questions such as how do Iboloy's Iboloy community or how do Baguio's Iboloy community perceive podcasting as a tool for the development of their language and culture? What topics of culture and language do Iboloys need to be podcasted? And what are the effects? of podcasting to the language and culture of Baguio's Iboloy community. So in order to answer those questions, I will have to do to analyze the affordances of podcasting and the development of language and culture of Baguio's Iboloy community with the specific research objectives to analyze the perception of Iboloy's com or Baguio's Iboloy community on using podcasting as a tool for language and culture to also know relevant topics of Baguio's Ibolay culture and language that needed to be podcasted, and lastly, to determine the effects of podcasting on the language and culture of Baguio's Ibolay community. However, my study is also limited only to Ibolay community here in Baguio City and not other ethno-linguistic groups in the country, and only be studying podcasting and no other media or mass media type of communication. So in order to understand the phenomena of, uh, of my study, I will be using the theory of affordances by Gibson. Basically, the theory of affordances is in which the world is perceived in terms of object possibilities for action or called affordances. Or basically, perception drives action. Just as Gibson said, the verb to afford is found in the dictionary, but the noun affordance is not. I have made it up. I mean by it something that refers to both the environment or an object and the animal in a way that no existing term does. That's why there is a term affordances already. It implies the complementarity of the animal and the environment. The affordances of the environment are what it offers the animal, what it provides or furnishes either for good or ill. Just like in these cases, if you see, if you see a button, what will you do? You can push it. You cannot turn or switch it. If you have a switch, you may flip it. And if you have a knob, a circular knob, you can actually rotate it. So if there is a perceived information or perceptual information, but there is no affordance, he called it a false affordance. If there is also perceptual information, but there is affordance, there is perceptible affordance, meaning the person or the animal can actually use that object based on what it perceives to be right. However, if there is affordance, but there is no perceptual information, it, the affordance is hidden. And if there is no perceptual information and there is also no affordance, there's a correct rejection or means, or it means that there's a an alternative way to do things in that environment. So for my conceptual framework in this study, the four dimensions of affordances will be determined on how the Iboloi community of Baguio perceive the use of podcasting to their own language and culture. 
perceptible affordances involve what they would perceive that podcasting's benefits and afford ad advantages. Hidden affordances are podcasting's unknown benefits. False affordances relate to podcasting's misleading or misunderstood perceptions. Correct rejection may involve alternatives that may affect podcasting as a tool for them. So based on the analysis of the affordances of podcasting, the community can then develop, develop potentials for action for their language and culture, such as various topics to be produced and aired. Once they are able to choose the appropriate action or topics, the community can then pro produce the podcasts. In the ICT 4D context, mere existence and perception of affordances is not enough. So it is also important to actualize these affordances which are the podcasts that may lead to the community's development. So my research design will be descriptive, analytical, and quasi-experimental. You'll see this in the next slides. So my respondents will be the heirs of the original Ibolai settlers of Baguio and Benguet, wherein their leaders and members still practice their culture and speak their language. For my study, the elders and leaders will be for my focus group discussions or FGD and the members will be respondents for my audience research. So my research instruments will be an interview guide for my focus group discussion or FGD and a survey questionnaire for my audience research. So I'll be gathering data first from a focus group discussion with the elders. I will be knowing what affordances or perception of podcasting for them in order to uh, broadcast or podcast their topics about language and culture. So the analysis will be based on their affordances. And also from these elders, I'll be knowing what topics they would want to be podcasted. And after this analysis of the FGD, I will be conducting a training for them for them to produce their own podcasts. And after that, after airing and producing those uh, podcasts, I will be conducting an audience research with members. And after that, I will be analyzing the data in order to know if this affordances of podcasting is effective for their uh, communities, especially for their language and culture. So that is my presentation for my thesis proposal. Are there any comments, questions, or suggestions? You may write them down in the comments section, like or dislike, and I will see you next time. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.